Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. And in this video, we are going to look at how to use Power Query to create a top n list of values. So how can we get Power Query to show the top 10 or the top five or the top 15 of a list? And I've got this list of cells here to use. Now I've done videos in the past about how you can do this using pivot tables, how you can use it using formulas and array formulas. But here I want to focus solely on Power Query and show how easy this can be, but also take it to another level, which I'm hoping you're going to enjoy because it's pretty cool stuff. Now, the first thing I want to do is load this into the Power Query editor. It's already in a table. Uh, it's got the name of table one. Uh, genius stuff and I'm just going to click on my data tab now I'm, I'm within the range here and say from table range and that will just load it straight in and I'm going to rename the query to start with so it's got the name of the table there table one I'm going to rename that top n cells because that's ultimately what it will be I want to have the ability of saying that I want the top five or the top 10, the ability to change that. To start with though, I'm just going to produce a typical top 10 list. Now, next up, I just want to change the data type of this date. I've got date and time in there. I'm just going to use the little button in the header there and switch that to date and replace the current step that's in the applied steps on the right hand side. Everything else is of a good data type for me. Now in this top 10 list, I only want the top 10 from the region of France. So I'm going to come into the filter arrow here and I'm going to filter out everybody except France and click OK. So I've only got the sales from the French customers there, but I've got all of them. I just want the top 10. So next up, I could go to the filter arrow for sales and come into number filters because if you've seen my video on pivot tables or if you've done filtering not just in pivot tables but in normal ranges as well you may know that there is a top 10 option in there but power query no option so that's your first thought I'll just come into the filter and do a top 10 or a top 10% because I can do that in Excel why can't I do it here well there's not an option. So what we're going to do instead is select the sales column and we're going to sort it descending. So I've got the biggest orders at the top working down. And then we're going to go to a button called keep rows. Choose the rows you want to keep. And we're going to keep the top rows. They will ask us how many. And I'm simply going to say, I would like 10. And then click OK. And we have ourselves the top 10 sales in that order from the region of France. Just those few simple steps. How easy was that? And I'm now just going to close and load this. Close and load two. And I'm going to put it as a table in this current worksheet, just so it's easier for us to see what's going on as we go through the demos in this video. And I'll click OK. And there we have it. This top 10 list will update now easily with the click of a button. So if I change this at France order, which is 209, so it's not in the top 10. But if I just update that to 500, check out the top 10 list, 500 would make it. And then I go to my data tab and refresh my connections, in it comes. That has now made top 10, is in the first position, and it readjusts itself to show 10. So in the click of a button, or a couple of buttons, we can refresh this top 10 list, and it's always going to remain current when our table changes. Pretty awesome. But maybe you're thinking the same as me. Hopefully you're thinking the same as me. And the fact that this is working for France, and it's the top 10. But what if I want the top five? What if I want it for the USA or for Belgium? What then? 
Well, let's have a look. You may have noticed these two coloured cells. One of them has a little data validation list for countries, so I could select Netherlands. The other one has got nothing in it, it's just yellow so I can see it. Um, I'm going to enter five in there. So maybe we want the top five from the Netherlands region. Let's open up our query on the right hand side. Here it is, queries and connections, there's our top ten rows. Let's load these two cells into my query editor. So with the Netherlands cell, we're going to click data, from table slash range. It does not have headers, that's good. Let's load it into the editor. And there it is, what an amazing table. But what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to rename it, this query, and call it country. And then I'm going to right mouse click on the cell and drill down. So I'm going to drill down through the table to the value itself because I want to use that value by referencing it from the other query. Now we'll get into some cool stuff. Drill down, there's the Netherlands value. And now I'm going to click on home and close and load this just as a connection. I don't want this visible anywhere. No data model, click OK. Let me get rid of that horrible header row that's showing in the table there. Then I'm going to repeat those steps for the next one. So with this number five, data from table range, no headers, click OK. In we come. Let's rename it something useful, uh, such as top N. Right mouse click the cell, drill down to the value, and then close and load it as a connection only. And turn off that annoying header row. So look at this on the right now, queries and connections. We have that country and we have that top N. Look at the icons, they're not tables. These are the values. And we're going to reference those values from the top N sales query. This is how cool that drill down technique can be. I will right mouse click on that query, top end sales, and edit. Let's go back into the editor. And we're going to click on the view tab at the top and the advanced editor. Yes, you heard me right, the advanced editor. Let's give it a click, put on your tin hat, and let's go and explore. Because as we look in here, there is an element somewhere in here. Where is France? Boom, there it is, look at this, France. So that is where it mentions the country that we have filtered by. I'm going to delete that. What am I going to write? Country, yes you're right. I'm going to write country because that's the name of that other query. Then we're going to look for where it says 10, because we want that to be dynamic. There it is, it says 10 there, let's delete it. And we're going to enter top N. Begin to wonder what I called it then for a moment, I think I called it top N. So in it goes, and we've made some simple edits to the advanced editor. No syntax errors detected, that's a good sign. Let's click on done wasn't recognized, make sure it's spelt correctly, okay. All right, we're gonna to have to check that out. Let me come into, let's just close and load this. It is called top N, I think it's because of the capital T. Let's come back in, edit the query. Advanced editor, capital T, capital N. Done. Oh, look at that. So the editor is case sensitive. Gotta make sure we write those in the right case. How cool is that? We've got the top five for the Netherlands. Let's close and load this. Yes. And now for the really cool stuff. 
If I change that to 10, data, refresh all, yes, the top 10 for the Netherlands. If I change this to the USA and I want the top 15, refresh all, top 15 for the USA. So this is Power Query. We are able to get a top end list, such as the top 10, such as the top five, and I've even brought in these two conditions. The fact that we could select what country we're interested in and how many we wanted to return. And we could have set even further criteria. So this makes it a lot easier than what we can produce using formulas and different to how we can do it with pivot tables. I was really impressed with how simple it was to get this up and off the ground. Really cool stuff. If you're quite new to using Power Query, get involved. Hopefully this video is a great demonstration of its power. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.